So since I've been doing so much time lapse lately, I thought it would be a good idea and opportunity to kind of take you guys through the process of what I think is the most powerful time lapse editing software that there is. It's called LR Time Lapse. Uh, there's a link below in the video description, and I pinned it to the comment section too if you guys want to check it out. But it's just a really easy way to go through and really produce a time lapse that doesn't have any flickering or anything like that. If you don't know what flickering is, a lot of times when you're doing like a day to night time lapse or a sunset and you're using aperture priority, what it does is it will adjust your camera settings and cause like a really quick and distinct flicker in your sequence so removing that is kind of necessary if you do want to produce something that doesn't have any distracting highlights or flickering or any any like shifting in the overall time lapse so basically what you do is you open your lr time lapse and this is what your dashboard is going to look like and what i like to do is just make a folder in my pictures folder of just like the day and here's the time-lapse sequence that we have and it is 631 images of a storm that was rolling in and there's just a really cool like nice little tree in the foreground just a single tree standing alone now since this was a storm the weather was changing so much we may have some adjustments to do and some deflickering to do so i thought this would be a great opportunity to do that the way this works is it basically has it organized so that you just go through these lists here. So you have Keyframe Wizard, Holy Grail, which the Holy Grail is like the day to night city time lapse if you ever do that. I don't do those too often, but that feature is there for you when you do need it. Um, save feature. And the, what I love about this is the drag to Lightroom, like Lightroom and LR time lapse interact with one another. They talk back and forth. So when you save the metadata as you're going through, which we're going to do in just a second, um, it talks back and forth with this program. So you can use Lightroom and you don't have to learn a completely new software to edit with. Um, the auto transition makes just the transitions through light really smooth. And then the visual D flicker is what I was talking about, like removing that flicker from your screen. So basically the first step, you just go in order here. So you just click on keyframe wizard. And when you do, you'll see up here on the screen in the top left, you get some keyframes. Now what keyframes are, they're little stops within the segment or your time-lapse sequence that allow you to adjust the settings in Lightroom. So you kind of have to look at this blue bar and figure out where your light is shifting and adjusting. So with this one specifically, I'm probably going to do five keyframes just to be sure I get the right light um, because we do have, you know, it's a little bit over, a little bit over, and then it goes drops to under when the core of the storm started to move in. So we have adjusting light here. So I'm gonna use five keyframes and I'm going to save that now that I have my keyframe set and it's going to pick out those five frames for me when I do pull this over into Lightroom. So once those are done, I'm going to click and hold this and I'm just going to drag it into my Lightroom library and it'll start importing those images in. Now, if you know, like with time lapse, since we're dealing with 631 images, it may take a little long for these to import and come in. Um, so you do kind of have to be patient here when these do start to come in. but. Eventually, once those get in there, we can section out those keyframes and start the editing process. Now again, what's cool about this is these talks, so once they are imported, you already have the keyframes set up as starred images. So I can come to the filters and just click that drop down and I'm going to go to LRT5 keyframes. So that's gonna bring up my five keyframes from this time-lapse sequence. And as you can see, there is varying light differences here. So I can go through and now edit these and then I can sync all those settings together. 
So in the develop module, I'm just gonna work on these. As you can see, like the composition is really cool. We have a lot of like dynamic clouds. So I wanna emphasize this hill right here and the light that's coming down on these. Um, so I'm gonna work with the dynamic clouds and a lot of the light that's going on in the foreground because it is pretty dramatic here. So just gonna adjust these frame by frame. I don't have to go crazy here with it. Uh, we'll lift the shadows a little bit, decrease my whites, decrease the blacks, um, bring up the clarity a little bit too. You know, these are really just generic edits. I don't think like you guys have to watch everything I do in the edits because you know how to use Lightroom, you know how to do all this. So I'm just gonna quickly go through these edits together and then I'll show you how to use LR time lapse to sync these up. I do want to say too, this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. I just thought that since I've been showing so much time lapse on the channel and in the vlogs, I thought this would be a great way to go through and show you how I make them and, and the software that I've been using. Yes, you can make them in Lightroom and Photoshop too. Uh, that video is linked here in the card that you're seeing, but I'm just gonna speed this up real quick, get through all the edits, uh, and then I'll kind of describe what I did with them once I finish all five images, because it could take a little while. So let me just quickly explain what I did here. If you look at all five of these images, and I'll make them a little bit bigger so you guys can see these. Um, basically through all five, what I wanted to do is bring out the dynamic energy and just like the raw power of this storm as it rolled in. And I really wanted to emphasize how much motion was going on in the clouds, so I added clarity to the clouds. But I think one of the most important pieces, especially in the later parts of the time lapse, was this little null that was right in the foreground and how that was catching so much light just right on the tip of that. And then you had shadowing going on around it. If I go to like the next one, I think it's important to see just this tiny clip of green light no matter how small it is, I think that just like needs to be there to make that tiny bit of foreground dynamic. So I think that's like why I wanted to do that. So what I'm gonna do now is when I'm in the library section, after I've edited each one of um, these keyframes, what I'm gonna do is select the first one, hold down my shift key and select the last one. And then I'm going to go to metadata and I'm going to go to save metadata to files. So I'm gonna hit that. And then once I go back over to LR time lapse, I can hit reload, and that's gonna reload those keyframes into here and, and show a representation of my edits within those keyframes in the top left corner where that preview tile is located. So you'll see here, once that's updated, these first two are pretty close to that exposure mark. I didn't really adjust my exposure that much. So when I did adjust the exposure up to just like a third of a stop higher, you can see that represented on the last three keyframes where you have this slight little jump in this exposure bar. Um, so what I'm gonna do is with all of that reloaded, what I'm gonna do is click auto transition. And again, you just run through this order of things. So it makes it really easy. You don't have to worry about what's the next step. What do I do next? It's just laid out in order for you. So you just click down the line. You just have to be kind of patient with these. And then once auto transition is done, you can see what it's done here to this time-lapse sequence, you can see the transition bar of light has adjusted to what my keyframes were. And if I select all, you can see how much is done here with the different settings that I used in all the keyframes. You don't really know like what all of these things do. You just have to know that now all of your frames have been adjusted based on what you did with your keyframes here. So. I'm just gonna deselect all so that we get a little bit cleaner of a view. And I'm gonna click on visual previews. And you have to do visual previews to see 
what it's actually going to look like and that's going to show us what each frame is going to look like as we go through the time lapse sequence and it's going to kind of make that preview for us so we can watch it and be sure like yes this is exactly what I wanted to do with the time lapse or no maybe I need to start over completely so this runs for a little bit it takes a little bit of time to go through the visual previews because remember it's applying and adjusting 631 images to this time lapse sequence so once you see when this is finally done, the pink bar is going to be like the smoothness and the visual previews of it. So you can just scroll through this bar and basically see like generally what it's going to look like from start to finish. Although I don't think you ever get like a really clear idea because it is such a big file and there are so many things to go through. But um, it just gives you a good idea of how much ease there is in the transition as you go through that time lapse since there was huge variation and light as we shot for I don't know 30 minutes or so. So the last step is the visual deflicker. So this is again going to reduce that flickering amount that can occur with changes in light or changes in setting if you were using aperture priority. I was using manual mode for this and shot at the same settings throughout the entire time lapse. However, I always like to click visual deflicker and just be sure that that's smooth all the way through. So if you click it, you get this green line that comes up behind the pink line and you can use this slider to adjust how smooth you want that to be. So just like generally anywhere between zero and 10, you know, with a default accuracy is good. I think that's probably gonna be fine since I was just using manual mode. Uh, hit apply and that's gonna apply those settings throughout the entire time lapse. Once that part is done, you move on to exporting. Again, this takes a long time because you're dealing with 631 files or however many images that you shot in the field. So be patient, that last step took like 16 minutes in between the uh, auto transition and visual previews. So this is gonna take a long time too. So just be patient as you wait, go through emails, make some coffee, do whatever you do. So once that's finally done, we move on to the exporting section. Now to do this, you have to jump back over into Lightroom. So here we are back in Lightroom, we have this pulled up. What I'm going to do is instead of having the keyframe selected, I'm going to go to LRT5 full sequence. And with that pulled up, what I'm going to do is do control or command A to select all of these. And the reason I'm doing this is you'll notice this little exclamation point because the metadata has a conflict here. So we need to read the metadata from the files that we adjusted in LR time lapse to do this. You go to metadata and you go to read metadata from files. And this is gonna update all of that metadata that we adjusted in LR time lapse. So then we can export this as a sequence in Lightroom. Once the metadata is updated, you can go to export down here in the bottom left corner. Just hit that and once your export window comes up, what you're gonna do is select out uh, which one of these of the LR time-lapse export features that you wanna use. You can do 4K, uh, JPEG, you can do TIFF, 16 bits. Uh, I like to do the highest rated one because I never know if I wanna export this and save it and put it in a video that's either like 4K or 8K. Maybe I wanna move it around within the final video that I do produce. So I always do the TIFF 16 bit. So now I have that selected. This is TIFF LRT Pro 16 bit and original resolution. I just don't like to compress things down. And the Pro version of LR time lapse gives me the most options of having the most fine detail within the export that I absolutely want and can have. Then all you have to do is hit export and wait another lengthy period of time because we are using again over 600 images. So shot with an A7R2. So these are 48 megapixel images that it's exporting out. So it may take a lengthy amount of time when I do hit export and this starts. 
once the export finishes, it's going to notify LR time lapse that it's ready to render the video, and then we can pick up there once this hits that point. Okay, so I'm not even joking, that literally took an hour and a half to export, but it's finally up in LR time lapse, as you can see on my screen. This notification window just pops up once it's done exporting from Lightroom. So once we're in here, we really export that video file that it's taking all of the image files from. So it's using that folder that we just exported with the image files to now create a video file. So looking at this, we can look at frame rate. I mean, 24 frames per second is basically how we see the world in our eyes. So I always keep it on 24 frames per second. If it's a really long time lapse and things are moving around a little slowly within the frame, you can speed that up to something like a 60 frames per second and get a little bit faster movement, but I typically stay in 24 frames per second. Um, 4K UHD is typically what I will export this as, um, just because I want that file size to be pretty big, and 4K UHD allows me to do that. It gives me some wiggle room in file size and just how big that canvas size is for the exported video file. And force output, uh, we're just keeping it in a 16 by nine. It sets it in that 4K UHD framework. And then LR time-lapse motion blur, uh, I keep it just on like a really low number here because like I, want to determine the motion blur in my camera. If I wanted a longer motion blur, what I would do is use a longer shutter speed. Since I am shooting in manual mode, I don't want to rely on this software to decide how much motion blur is added in there. You can turn that off if you want. In fact, that's probably what I will do for this one. Um, and then codec, I'm going to have it in the pro resolution just to give me as much possible clarity within this video file because I like to use these in my time-lapse videos and just having them exported as little sequences. The biggest video file, I never know if I want to zoom in during the video file. I don't know if I want to slightly move from like left to right, zoom out. It just gives me, again, more wiggle room with the amount that I have to play with here and the amount of resolution and file size that I have to play with too. And speaking of size, um, you know, and quality, I'm going with ultra high quality there. So once that's done, you set the output file and hit render video. And that's it, as Canadians say, Bob's your uncle and you're done. Here's the finished product. So that's it, that's how I edit my time-lapse sequences. It's pretty easy and straightforward. It just takes some patience and a little bit of time and kind of understanding the ins and out of using LR time-lapse and Lightroom in sync with one another. I think it's a great program. Again, this isn't sponsored, but if you want to check it out, I did pin that link to the comments section below and it's also in the video description below too. If you wanna get out and try time-lapse, I highly recommend LR time-lapse, especially if you are doing those holy grail day to night sequences or shooting in unpredictable light situations that may cause some flickering or if you like to shoot in aperture priority. I wanna thank you for watching this video sincerely. Um, it means a lot to me that you watch these, so I hope this really helped you out. I hope it can make your time-lapse sequences that much better. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, ringing the bell, uh, dropping me a comment and letting me know, you know, what you liked about it. If you do shoot time lapses, I think that would be fun to get comments going down there too. Hit the like button, all those good things. I uh, appreciate y'all. And again, thanks for watching.